electric potential is very closely related to potential energy. Now potential energy, recall, is energy by virtue of location. So how much potential energy an object has is directly proportional to the amount of work done on that object to get it to that location. And work is directly proportional to force, and force, according to Newton's second law, is directly proportional to mass. Now mass is sometimes a reflection of quantity or the number of something. So we can see that electric potential energy is directly proportional to the quantity of electric charges moved. Well, electric charges, electric potential, let's head inside and see what newspapers can do to teach us a little bit more about potential. Let's do one more example of a charged particle, a, a test charge, in a uniform electric field. Let's consider this time the same field and the same charge, but let's move the charge in the opposite direction. So we'll take our uniform electric field This is our uniform electric field, and this time, let's move it from point A to point, to point B this time. Okay? In this case, in order to move this charge from point A to point B, we see, we see that the electric field is in this direction, the electric force is in this direction, and the direction of displacement is opposite. So, emulating and mimicking the same, the same train of thought here, when we look at the work done by the electric field, we see the electric force in the positive direction, if this is our frame of reference right here, and we see the direction of displacement to be in the negative direction. That means that negative work is being done by the field. So we have negative work done by the electric field. Okay, well continuing on with our evaluation of the potential energy. The potential energy then would be the negative of this negative work done. And that means that the potential energy experienced by the particle would be proportional to an increase. So as the particle moves from point A to point B, or if the charge moves closer, the potential energy will go up. Now if you can imagine a charge, a test charge, flicked into this field, just thrown into this field, this charge, the force on it's acting this way, but the charge would decelerate or accelerate in the negative direction. And so we can see that the potential energy would increase, but more clearly we would observe that the kinetic energy decreased. And so this is consistent with the behavior of a conservative force. So what does this mean for the change of potential or the potential difference? It means the negative it means the negative of the displacement through which through the uniform electric field. And so our potential difference here is we have here's our electric field and the displacement in this case is a negative displacement and so we would end up having a potential difference of a positive e delta d. Okay, and what does this mean? Well, this means that this means that as the particle moves from point A to point B, it experiences an increase in electric potential. So the charge experiences an increase in electric potential. Okay. 
this piece right here, this one right here, this example right here, this wouldn't normally happen. This concept of negative work being done by a field, like, okay, it's easier to see that some external force, like me, would be required to move this particle from A to B. The field wouldn't just allow the charge to move in. So in this way, this concept of negative work is a little bit shady. But what we're trying to show here is this. This would not naturally occur. In order for this to occur, some external force would have to do work on this particle. Now it is this example right here that demonstrates the principle of how a battery exactly works. A battery provides some external agent, and we're going to talk about that. We're not getting into that right now, but some external agent necessary and required to increase the potential of this charge so that it can carry this energy that it gains throughout the circuit, delivering the energy to the device in question. So this concept of something external doing the work, that is going to lead us into our next lesson. And so, this I want to show you this because it's the opposite, the exact opposite of what would naturally happen. Okay, well now that we've seen these conceptual, we've seen some conceptual applications of a charge in motion here, now that we've seen this conceptual application, this charge in motion, we are ready to consider what happens to a single charge. We've been focusing so much on what happens to a charge in an electric field, in an external electric field, that we've deliberately neglected the fact that even that little charge produces its own electric field. Now mind you, it's a test charge and we deliberately select a test charge so it doesn't influence this so we can look at and make some observations of the behavior of this charge, hence all our definitions of electric potential and electric potential energy. But now let's turn to this single charge for a moment. Let's see what the electric potential relative to a single charge is all about.